dear brothers and sisters in Christ. On this most holy night, when our Lord Jesus Christ passed from death to life, the Church invites her children throughout the world to come together in vigil and prayer. This is the Passover of the Lord. We remember his death and resurrection by hearing his word and celebrating his mysteries, confident that we shall share in his victory over death and live with him forever in God. Eternal God, who made this most holy night to shine with the brightness of your one true light, set us aflame with the fire of your love and bring us to the radiance of your heavenly glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Christ, yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, Alpha and Omega, all time belongs to him and all ages, to him be glory and power through every age and forever. Amen. by his holy and glorious wounds. May Christ our Lord guard us and keep us. May the light of Christ rising in glory banish all darkness from our hearts and minds. The light of Christ. Thanks be to God. Christ yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, Alpha and Omega, all time belongs to him and all ages. 
To him be the glory and power through every age and forever. Amen. By his holy and glorious wounds, may Christ our Lord guard us and keep us. May the light of Christ rising in glory banish all darkness from our hearts and minds. The light of Christ. Thanks be to God. Rejoice, heavenly powers, sing choirs of angels. O universe, dance around God's throne. Jesus Christ, our King, is risen. Sound the victorious trumpet of salvation. Rejoice, O earth in glory, revealing the splendor of your creation. Radiant in the brightness of your triumphant King, Christ has conquered. Now his life and glory fill you darkness banishes forever. Rejoice, O Mother Church, exult in glory. The risen Saviour, our Lord of life, shines upon you. Let all God's people sing and shout for joy. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and good that with hearts and minds and voices we should praise you, Father Almighty, the unseen God, through your only Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who has saved us by his death, paid the price of Adam's sin, and reconciled us once again to you. For this is the Passover feast, when Christ, the true Lamb of God, is slain, whose blood consecrates the homes of all the faithful. This is the night when you first saved our ancestors, freeing Israel from her slavery and leading her safely through the sea. This is the night when Jesus Christ vanquished hell, broke the chains of death and rose triumphant from the grave. This is the night when all who believe in him are freed from sin, restored to grace and holiness and share the victory of Christ. This is the night that gave us back what we had lost. Beyond our deepest dreams, you made even our sin a happy fault. Most blessed of all nights, evil and hatred are put to flight and sin is washed away. Lost innocence regained and mourning turned to joy. Night truly blessed when hatred is cast out, peace and justice find a home and heaven is joined to earth, and all creation reconciled to you. Therefore, Heavenly Father, in this our Easter joy, accept our sacrifice of praise, your church's solemn offering. 
grant that this Easter candle may make our darkness light, for Christ the morning star has risen in glory. Christ is risen from the dead, and his flame of love still burns within us. Christ sheds his peaceful light on all the world. Christ lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. As we await the risen Christ, let us hear the record of God's saving deeds in history, recalling how he saved his people in ages past and in the fullness of time sent his Son to be our Redeemer. And let us pray that through this Easter celebration, God may bring to perfection in each of us the saving work he has begun. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky. And there was evening and there was morning, the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the sea, seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind and it was so god made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind 
and God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created, in the day that the Lord God made earth and the heavens. Let us pray that we may see God's image restored. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. Your love cannot be contained and overflows in the wonder of creation. You formed the universe out of nothing and moulded us from the clay of the earth. All you have made sings of your marvellous deeds, O Lord, our Maker and Redeemer. Amen. As Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked back, and there were the Egyptians advancing on them. In great fear, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us, bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not the very thing we told you in Egypt? Let us alone, and let us serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. But Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm, and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to keep still. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. But you lift up your staff, and stretch out your hand over the sea, and divide it, that the Israelites may go into the sea on dry ground. Then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, so that they will go in after them. And so I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and his chariot drivers. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gained glory for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots and his chariot drivers. The angel of God who was going before the Israelite army moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel, 
and so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night, and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a well for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots and chariot drivers. At the morning watch the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, Let us free from the Israelites, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians, so the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord, I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. Let us pray that God will give freedom to his enslaved people. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. You heard the agony of your people as they cried out from their slavery, and you gave them Moses to lead them to a land flowing with milk and honey. Hear the cry of the enslaved and the homeless today, and lead us through the turbulent sea of life to our true home with you, O Lord, our Maker and Redeemer. Amen. I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries and bring you into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean from all your uncleannesses and from all your idols I will cleanse you. A new heart I will give you and a new spirit I will put within you and I will remove from your body the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and make you follow my statutes, and be careful to observe my ordinances. Then you shall live in the land that I gave to your ancestors, and you shall be my people, and I will be your God. Let us pray that God will give to the thirsting a new outpouring of his refreshing spirit. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. When we are overwhelmed by the wasting world, gather us again and renew us. Create in us a new heart and a renewed spirit, that we may be a people prepared to live in your land and walk in your ways, O Lord, our Maker and Redeemer. Amen.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Let us pray that we may reign with the risen Christ in glory. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him, grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptised into Christ Jesus were baptised into his death. Therefore we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his, we know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body of sin might be destroyed, and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin, but if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin, once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. 
When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the Gospel of the Lord. And so he is risen. Alleluia. Our 40 days of penitent preparation, our observance of the days of Holy Week and the culmination in the Tridium have come to an end. Once again we are to shout aloud and proclaim with joy that Jesus Christ, the one who was crucified for our sins and failings and all those of humanity, is risen. And with his resurrection the sting of death has been tamed. Now is the time to rejoice and celebrate. And yet maybe that feels a little premature. Just yesterday we were at the foot of the cross, holding our grief. In liturgical time we are fine. We're not breaking any rules or confusing days and nights. Yet without the traditional continuing on to the celebration of the first Eucharist of Easter right away tonight, and despite the huge strides in technology taken this year, still not quite being able to pull off a throwing into light and the glory of bells and sound, the cacophony of resurrection in my garden. We perhaps find ourselves in something of the confusion and mixed emotion of Mary Magdalene, Mary mother of James and Salome. Rushed in laying their loved one in his tomb, before the Passover began, they now, having sat with their incredible grief for the Sabbath, return. Very early in the morning on the first day of the week, they return. Reads as soon as they possibly could. You might imagine some chatter about practical things, fear or concern about who might see them or stop them. Rushing through the deserted narrow streets, nipping through this cut through and that to get back to the place where Jesus was laid as soon as they possibly could. And then the breath stopping moment when they see the tomb already open in the dark of the night, he had quietly risen from the dead. Now crucifixion is public. It is loud, explicit and nauseating, but resurrection isn't like that. It happens out of sight and unannounced. This is true of all our lives. When the weight of life is brutal on our shoulders, those are the conditions that most resemble that first Easter. But personal resurrection may already have begun. Life returning inside the shroud, inside the tomb. And so we can understand their terror and amazement and not feel that these are misplaced emotions at the resurrection. One day in eternity, the resurrection will be complete. There will be alleluias and trumpets and triumph. But that's not how it began. That's not how the resurrection began. It began with three scared women who could find no words. And so as the music, the alleluias and the rejoicing kicks in today, some will find themselves wishing they could share in this jubilant certainty. 
And perhaps after this past year of pandemic and still facing restrictions, there will be more people feeling that they're not quite ready for this. That their celebration and jubilant certainty feels a little lacking. So let us rest this night in knowing that there is, in fact, a wonderful godly precedent for quietly coming to the resurrection in the middle of the night without the same fanfare we are used to, a precedent that seems most fitting for this most holy night. This is the resurrection. Brothers and sisters, I ask you to profess the faith of the Church. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. May Christ dwell in your hearts through faith, that you may be rooted and grounded in love and bring forth the fruit of the Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. The peace of the risen Christ be with you. Alleluia, alleluia.